the great house at Collinwood in the year 1840. On this night, Quentin Collins had planned to take Daphne with him and leave Collins Port forever. But he has discovered once again that the treachery of Gerard Stiles knows no limits. Daphne was intercepted and forced by Gerard to have a strange and compelling dream, one that placed her under a temporary spell and caused her to agree to marry Gerard. Quentin has heard about this and is set out for Collingwood, hoping to arrive in time to save the woman he loves. Daphne Herridge, do you take this man to be your lawful husband? I do. Do you take this woman to be your wedded wife? I do. What God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. I now pronounce you man and wife. No! I said that will be all. Why'd you do it? Daphne. You just keep your hands away from her, Quentin. Stay away. Daphne. She didn't come to you willingly. You've put her under a spell, haven't you? It doesn't matter what I've done or what I did do. The important thing is that Daphne is now my wife. You listen to me. I'm going to take her out of here. And if you try and stop me, so help me, I'll kill you with my bare hands. Quentin, your killing days are over. You never expected to see me again, did you? This was all a setup, wasn't it? I suppose you could say it was killing two birds with one stone. Yes, I had planned to go to the fishing village and have the police arrest you there, but then I thought, no, it would be better to have it here after Daphne and I became husband and wife. I'm taking you back to the jail, Quentin, and I suggest you come along quietly, because if you give me any trouble, there won't be any need for an execution. I advise you to do as he says. I suppose you've already got Desmond? Yes. The police found him at the fishing shack about half an hour ago. Oh. What? Oh. Just come out of the spell. Man. I told you to keep away from my wife. Why? Uh... Quentin, what are you doing? Now it's here? all right. I was tricked into coming here. Just as you were tricked into marrying Gerard. Marrying? You... Don't you remember anything? I remember the dream. A dream he forced you to have. All right, Quentin, that's quite enough. Take him away, Trask. No, you can't do that! I won't let you take him! Just come here for a minute. I'm your husband now, and you will do as I say. I don't believe that! You took... Well, now, why don't we go upstairs to the bridal chamber? No, I will not go upstairs with you. I don't want to leave, Quentin. You will do exactly as I say, or believe me, Trask will use that pistol. You better go upstairs. Quentin, it's you that I love. You know that. I know it, Anna. All right, Quentin, take your last look at her. Believe me, it will be your last look. <laughs> Trask, if there is a way to get back from the grave, I'll find it. And if I do, so help me, I'll torment you until you die. Just walk ahead of me at a safe distance. Your 
is no way on earth you can get me to stay here. Oh, my dear, you're merely angry right now. That will pass. But I'll never stop loving Quentin. You will, in time. You see, my dear, I'm a very, very patient man. Now, Quentin will go back to jail. And Trask, he will start the process for starting the immediate execution. There's nothing that you can do to prevent it. You think you're gaining by all this. How can you stand to be married to someone who hates you? Oh, Daphne, you don't hate oh, me. Oh, yes, I do. I hate you more than I've ever hated anything in my entire life. A wife must learn never to hate her husband. I'll not be your wife. I never keep any of those marriage vows. You will know one thing that fate declared that you will become Mrs. Gerard Stiles. You're not Gerard Stiles. You're a monster named Judah Zachary. You took Gerard Stiles and you possessed his entire life. And there's nothing left of him anymore. There's only you, Judah, the warlock. But you'll never win me over. It's just see, I love Quentin Collins. And there's no power on earth that can change the way I feel. I am afraid you're wrong, my dear. But it will take you quite a while. And meanwhile, you have a time to think it over. To think it over very carefully. No! said it was a room in the east wing. In 1970, we witnessed parallel time in this room. It changed, it became Angelique's room. Catherine! Catherine! I'm in here, Daphne. Catherine, I must talk to you. Well, what is it? What's wrong? I've just had the most incredible experience in the village. I was on my way into the Collins Port Inn, and old Ezra Robinson was sitting on the porch. Well, he always talks to me, and I hardly ever pay any attention to it, but this time I did, because what he said was frightening. What did he say? Well, now, everyone in the village knows that you've agreed to marry Morgan. Yes. Well, old Ezra began by saying that he thought that was just fine. But then he asked me if you were planning to live at Collingwood. And I said, yes, you were. He looked at me for a moment, and he said, your sister will be making a tragic mistake. You've got to warn her. Warn me? What about? Well, he told me a story about a room somewhere in this house. A room that's haunted, Catherine. And that's the reason why everybody at Collinwood lives in fear. And that's why they keep their doors locked at night. Catherine, he said there was a legend about oh, this room. Oh, Ezra Robinson is a muddle-headed old fool. I'm surprised you even took him seriously. Oh, Catherine, please. I only know that what he said disturbed me. What is it about a legend? Well, every generation, this family holds a lottery to decide which member of the family has to spend the night in that room. And Catherine, everyone that's ever gone into it has either died or they've come out stark raving mad. Catherine, the last person to go into that room Justin Collins. Oh, and that's why Justin Collins is the way he is today. Yes. Daphne, Justin Collins had an accident. Catherine, that's what the family always tells everyone. But do you realize they've never said what kind of an accident or how it happened, Catherine, or where? Oh, Daphne, I don't believe a word of it. Well, I think you should at least find out what's going on in this house before you decide to come and live here. Listen, I don't intend to let anything upset my marriage plans. And I certainly won't embarrass the family by going and asking them a lot of questions about a locked room. Catherine! I think you've just made a wise decision. Quentin, how long have you been standing there? Long enough to be disturbed by what I heard. I'm sorry. You should be. Catherine, Morgan wants to see you downstairs. Something about wedding arrangements, I Please believe. excuse me. Catherine, I'll come with you. No, you stay right here. It's all right, Catherine. I'm not going to hurt her. I've been gone for seven years. Do you know why? Yes. 
You were convicted of manslaughter and you've been in prison. That's right. I got into a fight with a man and I killed him. I killed him because he was spreading stories about my family. The same kind of stories that old Ezra Robinson is telling you. He was trying to make my family look like a pack of fools. Now, I must admit that I've never gotten along particularly well with my family. But it's the only family that I've got. And I don't like to hear stories or so-called legends about them. And I don't like to hear them slandered. Do I make myself absolutely clear to you? Yes, you do. And I'm really very sorry about what happened. All right. It's all forgotten. Now, let's talk about you. You know, um, when I first uh, came back and saw you, I, I didn't recognize you. You've uh, grown up the past five years. And I must say that uh, I like what I see. Thank you very much. Come on, I'll take you for a walk. No, I can't. I, I've got to go back to the village. Well, then that's where I'll walk you. Well, now, you might as well get used to it. I never take no for an answer. Come on. had your pleasure of your company around here for quite a while. What brings you to Collingwood? I told Barnabas that I'd meet him here. Have you seen him? Why, no, I'm afraid I haven't. I'm, I must have missed him. I was in the study. Oh, would you mind if I waited in the drawing room? No, not at all. I will wait with you. Um, then I will wait for Barnabas, and uh, then I will tell you the news. Tell us what news? Quentin was recaptured and taken back to jail earlier this evening. This happened just after Daphne and I were married. I came here as soon as I heard the news. I appreciate it. But you might as well have stayed home for all the good you can do me. We might as well admit it's all over. We still have some time. To do what? To get you out of here again if necessary. Barnabas, there isn't a prayer of that happening. And besides, they got the place well guarded this time. Is Desmond all right? Yes. He's down in his old cell. I don't understand that. It wasn't her fault. She had no other choice. She had to marry him. He put her under a spell. Now, Barnabas, listen to me. You've got to give up the idea of trying to help me. You've got to get back to Collingwood and keep Gerard from getting Daphne. I'll do my best. Mr. Dawson and I have just had a long talk with Judge Vale. Trask, from the smile on that face of yours, I know what the outcome was. Yes, the judge agrees that there is no reason to prolong this. He has set tomorrow morning as the time for your execution and that of Desmond. This is your day, Mr. Trask. But remember, we still have a private matter to settle between us. Tomorrow may be my day. We only have 24 hours to save Quentin's life. What are you going to do? I've run out of answers. That's why I have no other choice but to turn to you. To me? I didn't want it to happen this way any more than you did. But there's no other course open to me. You must save Quentin. But you know that's impossible. 
You have it within you the powers to do something that none of us can do. Just exactly what do you expect me to do? Use your powers to find the head of Judah Zachary and destroy him. Because what you're saying is suicidal. That head, wherever it is, is still under the power of Gerard Stiles. He would know if anyone came near it. And he would use those powers to destroy them. There is no hope for Quentin or for Desmond. And there may, may be no hope for either of us unless we leave Collinwood tonight. It's terribly ironic what's happened between us. We've been enemies for years and until we made this reconciliation. But I'm afraid that's all it is. We are, can be nothing more than friends. But I love you, Barnabas. Angelique, I've grown more fond of you than I ever thought possible. But I'm afraid I can never love you as you want to be loved. But how can you know anything like that? When you lifted the curse from me, you made me human. That's the difference between us now. I am human, you are not. You are still a witch with all your old powers and all your own feelings or lack of feelings about others. But I have changed. You know I have changed. I could have lifted the curse from you and I did not. Because it suited your interests not to. But you still feel the same way about other people's suffering. You're cold and indifferent. You will never change, I suppose, being what you are. If that's true, I... Well, I'm sorry for you. Terribly sorry. If I could be... as you want me to be... Well, what's the point of speculating about it? I'm afraid you will never change. <laughs> I didn't realize you were still in the house. I've been looking for Daphne. Well, don't you mean Mrs. Stiles? Your wedding was a fraud and you know it. Did Quentin send you over here to look for her? Where is she? You haven't answered my question. I demand to know. I demand you... nothing from you. This is my house, Barnabas. And the whereabouts of my wife is nobody's business but my own. I demand that you get out of here. Now, leave while you still have a chance. Get out! I was beginning to think that you would never come out into the open, Judah. If I've changed my mind, I, I have... I have come for other reasons, my dear. <laughs> tomorrow, it will be all over. The execution of Quentin takes place tomorrow morning at dawn. Oh, darling. Oh, I will be a witness there, and if uh, by any chance you need a message delivered to him, I will be happy to give it to him. You really <laughs> enjoy this, don't you? God, you really enjoy seeing me suffer. Oh, my dear, your suffering is self entitled I hate you, Gerard! I hate you! I will do what I can to help Quentin. But what I am about to do is really for you, Barnabas. Because I love you. And I need your love. If I cannot prove myself to you this way, then there is no way. Prince of Fire, I call upon the flame to summon you in this my most desperate hour of need. 
I call upon all the dark creatures of nature to aid me in the destruction of one who is my mortal enemy. Prince of fire, hear my call. Know that I have always been your most faithful, trusted and obedient servant. I beseech you, grant me the power to destroy this man who calls himself Gerard Stiles, but who is in reality the embodiment of Judah Zachary. What's happening to you? What's happening to you, Judah? Let him suffer as he has caused so many others to suffer. And then let him die, that this house may be rid of him forever. I beg you, in the name of every evil spirit that is obedient to you, return him now to the hell from whence he came. It is you, Miranda. And you have just used your last power. 